Hey, what's going on everybody? Nick Push here. Well guys, the time has arrived. It is time to break down and talk about Halloween Kills with spoilers. So this is your warning. There will be spoilers in this review. I made a non-spoiler review um, right after I saw the movie and now I kind of want to break it down and get into the nitty gritty. So if you haven't seen the movie yet, stop this video, go watch the goddamn movie. Uh, whether in the theater or over on Peacock, and then tune back in. So, a couple of things here. Number one, um, if you haven't already, please do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. It really helps out the channel, um, and I really do appreciate it. Uh, secondly, these are just my initial thoughts on the movie. I have only seen this movie one time. I saw it in the, in the theater on Thursday night. I needed to, you know, marinate my thoughts a little bit here, um, but my thoughts are obviously subject to change. Um, I said in my other review that um, I was a huge fan of 2018 when I left the theater, and that movie has soured on me just a little bit, um, at least certain aspects, but it's soured on me um, in the three years since then. So like always, this is subject to change. I am giving you guys my initial breakdown of the things I liked and disliked about this movie. I have many more videos to come. Uh, there's going to be new ranking videos, uh, different aspects of breaking down different scenes and characters, and all kinds of shit to come. Um, so like I said, hit that subscribe button Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything. Alright, here's the thing. I have withheld from watching any other reviews on this movie, uh, any other YouTube videos. I have no idea really what anyone is saying. They could hate this movie, they could love this movie. Um, I don't know. So I'm going to have no idea if I'm on an island. Um, I thought that was kind of the best way to do this. So, you know, my judgment isn't clouded. I'm not saying that, you know, someone else is going to say they like something and I'm going to, you know, follow suit on that. Uh, however, you know, sometimes you hear someone say something and you're like, oh yeah, you're right. So I just wanted to give my thoughts on this movie and then I'll kind of read into and, you know, watch and hear what everyone else is saying. Um, so, finally, before we get into this, do me a favor, when you're done watching this video or during this video, comment below, tell me what you loved about this movie, what you hated about this movie, um, anything, any thoughts you have on this movie. I know you got a billion of them just like me, um, and I love hearing your guys' thoughts. I'll try to read and comment on, on all of them. Uh, you guys are the best. So, I am not a movie reviewer, like I said in my non-spoiler review. There's other YouTube channels where people review movies and they're fantastic. That's not really what I do. I just kind of give my thoughts. Um, however, however, for this particular movie, since this has been so hyped, since we and I have been talking about this for eons, it seems like, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break it down like this. I'm gonna talk about what I liked about the movie, I'm gonna talk about what I thought was mixed about the movie, and then I'm gonna talk about what uh, I disliked about the movie, and then we'll kind of wrap it all up in a neat little bow here. So, let's get into what I liked. Excuse me, I got some notes over here. What I liked. First of all, let's get into my favorite part of the movie. This might surprise you guys. My favorite part of the movie was the fucking flashback. Wow. Wow. As you guys know, you know, if you've watched some of my earlier videos regarding the flashback, or anything about the flashback, I have been excited about it, but I've been cautiously optimistic. Basically, I've been scared they're gonna fuck something up. Um, I was scared that, you know, I'm gonna be watching Halloween 1978 and, you know, be thinking about something I didn't like in the flashback. Not what I wanna do, right? Not what any of us wanna do, especially with, you know, a movie as iconic and loved by us all as Halloween 1978. Well, they knocked this thing out of the fucking park. It's a home fucking run. I'm speechless, guys. I, I, I literally cannot believe how brilliant the flashback was. Um, a few things about the flashback that I liked. The look of Myers, they nailed. And we saw that in some of the teasers. We saw it you know, in some of the leaked photos. So we knew that, but they executed it perfectly. Um, the, the way it opens up, uh, there is a scene where Hawkins is running down an alley, or he's in an alley and he, see, he sees Myers and Myers just kind of walking. He's lit in the shadows. It's got a very Halloween 2, 1981 vibe, the way he's kind of walking through the alley. Hawkins fires and misses him, and then he's gone. <laughs> I 
Are you kidding me? That's fucking perfect. Wow. Um, and then, you know, we run into Lonnie and Lamb, and he has an encounter with the shape, um, which is really cool. Um, it's actually better, better than I thought it was going to be. Um, so that is awesome. And then the Myers house is awesome. Um, it really feels like 1978. Um, you know, from the uniforms that the officers are wearing, to the cars, to the houses, to the way it's shot, the fucking score in the flashback, everything about it is 1978. I mean, holy shit, guys, they, 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 they did it. They fucking did it. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Um, Dr. Loomis was a big concern of mine. You know, as we know, he was going to be in the flashback, and he is. Couple of things here. Number one, his voice wasn't a huge fan of. I, I thought it was off a little bit. Um, it didn't sound like Donald Pleasance. It's not Donald Pleasance. I understand that, um, but it was a little off a little bit, or off a little bit. However, however, the look of him, which was actually my major concern, and they showed a fucking close up. Um, clearly, it's not Pleasance, but it's pretty goddamn close. Like, it is pretty goddamn close. I bought it. I didn't think I'd buy it. Unbelievable. Um, so, I thought it was awesome. So, we get the big flashback scene at the beginning. I, I don't know what it is, maybe 12 minutes, something like that. And it basically ends with um, Myers, you know, that what the image we saw of Myers standing on the front lawn, you know, after killing Hawkins' partner upstairs, or Hawkins kind of killing his partner by accident upstairs um, and then you know it kind of stops right there okay just like the original you know the cops are surrounding Myers Loomis is there Loomis is yelling to Hawkins upstairs you know did he kill again did he kill again blah 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 um, and then stops well then later on we get Hawkins telling a story and we go back to the flashback and we find out how it really ended you know the cops hit Myers and beat him down and Loomis went to go fucking shoot him in the head to kill him and then Hawkins, you know, said he, I, I remember, I just thought that that was someone's baby. So Hawkins stopped and he pushed his arm up and Loomis shot up into the air. I liked it. I liked it for the fact that, you know, Loomis had seen enough. He, his worst fears are, had come true. You know, that Myers was what he thought he was. So Loomis was going to kill him. In front of all these goddamn cops, which is fucking badass, by the way. Um, and Hawkins stopped him, you know. And then, you know, we get a little scene with the cop telling Hawkins to switch guns or something like that. Um, irrelevant to me. But everything about the flashback, guys, they did it. They did it. I'm in shock, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I can't wait to watch the flashback scene again. So that's my number one like, my favorite part of the fucking movie, which is awesome because, as you guys have heard me say, this flashback could make or break the movie. If they would have fucked one little thing up, it might have really hampered my overall experience. But they did it. And bravo to them. Kudos. So that's my number one like. Uh, the other, the next thing I liked, Michael Audrey Myers. You know, the reason we show up to these movies uh, was fucking awesome. You know, as we know, this is movie is titled Halloween Kills, and he is badass. It did not disappoint. Myers did not disappoint. He looked menacing as hell with the burnt mask. James Jude Courtney, dare I say, was he even better than 2018? He might have been, and that's a high bar because he was fantastic in 2018. He might be better now. You know, a second run as Myers, he might even be, be better. The kills were fucking brutal, absolutely brutal. As we knew, as we knew from what we saw in the trailers, but it was even like they were just painful. Um, you know, a lot of bare hand kills, you know, and stabbings where the guy's just fucked dead and he just keeps fucking stabbing him. You know, it's borderline Rob Zombie shit, which you guys have heard me complain about before, but for some reason that just worked for me here. It was awesome. Um, and one of my main gripes from 2018 that Myers didn't really do any stalking minus one scene, was that rectified? Not really. Um, not really. There was one scene in particular that I liked where he is um, walking after Lindsay Wallace in the woods. She's hiding from him, and you just hear him breathing. Um, and at first, I 
I was a little taken aback because I would have liked some type of score there. Uh, but the way he's breathing from the mask, you just hear him because it's quiet in the woods. It's kind of like Lindsay's point of view. I thought it was very effective. Uh, was it him stalking her? Not really. It was kind of a half chase scene. Um, but the way it was lit in the darkness of the woods was really well done. Um, so big fan, big fan of that scene. Big fan, huge fan of the portrayal of Myers in this movie. The next thing I liked, the opening credits. I was, I was crossing my fingers that we were going to get a pumpkin, our jack-o'-lantern. We got, we got a pumpkin. We got a jack-o'-lantern. In fact, we got many jack-o'-lanterns. Um, I personally wanted a jack-o'-lantern on fire, and initially I was like, oh, it's kind of disappointing. It was just a jack-o'-lantern. Then it's kind of fading out, and you see another jack-o'-lantern, another, and some of them are, some of them are lit. The flame in there is is growing, and then that, then one of the jack-o'-lanterns gets on fire. Uh, it was awesome. It was awesome. So same font again as uh, 78 and 18. So that was, that was a great thing to see. Um, they, they really nailed the opening credits again. Let's talk about the Strode family. This is another aspect of the film that I liked. I thought Laurie was used sparingly, but perfectly in this movie. Um, especially after, look, what she went after, went um, through, sorry, last movie, was pretty fucking brutal. You know, she got stabbed, she got thrown from a balcony, all kinds of shit, right? So she was kind of relegated to the hospital. Try as she might to get out of there, you know, she, 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 she certainly tried to go after Michael herself once she found out he was alive. She tried, but it didn't work. Lori's, dare I say, an old lady, you know? If she was able to just, you know, take a shot and uh, for the pain and then get out of there and go hunt Myers, is that really believable? No. So I thought she was she was used perfectly. Um, a lot of good exposition she had. Um, I, I, I thought she was great. Um, Jamie Lee Curtis, you know, w was very good again, um, which is not surprising to me at all. Let's talk about Karen. Karen was basically the heart and soul of this movie. Uh, which may surprise you if you were not a big fan of her in 2018. And I was kind of mixed on her in, in 2018. But yeah, she really led the emotional charge of this movie. You know, she has to deal with the fact that her husband was just killed. She has to deal with the fact that, Al you know, Allison went through this too. That her mother is, you know, essentially on life support for a little bit. And then Michael is alive. You know, and Allison goes after Michael. We'll get into her. But, you know, Karen was the heart and soul of this movie. Um, obviously, as we saw from the trailer, she goes at the end and grabs his mask. Um, and yeah, she, she knocked, Judy Greer knocked it out of the park here. I thought she was, I wouldn't say great. There were a few lines of dialogue and a few things that I didn't like. But for the most part, Judy Greer knocked it out of the park. And I will not complain about her performance. She, she did very well. Allison. Okay. I'm, I'm, I, I liked her performance. I wish she was given a little more. She was definitely given more um, personality and more, you know, spunk than 2018, which I was happy about because I feel like, I, as we all probably do, the torch should be passed to her as the final girl of the franchise. She was given more to do. Um, I would have liked to see her get more. But, you know, she's got some great scenes here. You know, she, she wants to go after Myers. You know, she's done waiting. You know, Myers killed her father. You know, she mentions, you know, that, that someone, someone else loves that person, you know, that was that when a body was just brought into the hospital. So Allison did a good job. Um, she had a confrontation with Myers at the end, which we saw in the trailer, um, which she, you know, held her own, so to speak. Um, and then it was interrupted by Karen taking the mask off. Uh, but Allison, no qualms. The whole Strode family, I, I liked them in this movie, uh, which they would have been mixed in 2018 for me. Let's see here. And my final like of this movie. Don't take it final like I didn't like it. I'll get to my overall thoughts. But my final like of this movie is the attention to detail. And this talk, this goes for you know the writing, the directing. They had so many tiny little details in this movie that just made me giddy that it was that they were there um, as a fan of the franchise that I loved. 
couple of them to, that come to mind are you know using the cops have in the patch of Warren's County Sheriff's Department and then the EMTs having the HMH logos and basically the exact same jacket as Bud and Jimmy had in Halloween 2 1981 very cool touch the one detail that I really like too was um, in the flashback um, the window in Judith's room had the was that the gutter that falls when Loomis is uh, in the room telling Brack talking to Brackett and you know it's still there and still cracked <laughs> fucking awesome that, that is awesome those little things and I know I missed a bunch of other attention to detail moments but those little things really matter to us fans I, I really got to give them credit for nailing that shit I, I, I thought it was awesome now let's get to the mixed portions. So let's talk about the returning characters from the OG specifically. This was, as, as a whole, they were mixed for me. Let's start with one I didn't like. Let's start with Tommy Doyle. Tommy was probably, and I've made videos about this too, but, and it changed all the time, but Tommy was probably who I was most excited to see because you know he recognized the boogeyman before Lori did. He saw him cross the street, you know? So I, I was excited to see how Tommy was. And I really was disappointed in the performance by Anthony Michael Hall. Look, Anthony Michael Hall is a great actor. I really do think he's a very, very good to great actor. He just seemed a little wooden, you know, the way he said some of his lines. They were like one-liners, but he just just didn't do it for me. I, it, what some of those liners, they weren't believable for me, at all. So it, it really just kind of took me away from the movie. Um, Lindsay Wallace, you know, like I mentioned, she had that good uh, scene where Mike was chasing her in the woods. Um, I thought she, I thought she was pretty good. Um, Kyle Richards did a good job. She, you know, in the trailer, the second trailer, we saw her warning those kids, and then you know Myers is there, and you know Lindsay goes and uh, takes a puts a bunch of bricks in a pillowcase and hits Myers in the face and then she tries taking his mask off and uh, you know then has to run away. I thought she was very good um, overall. No complaints with Lindsay. Um, Marion Chambers, same thing. She was fine, you know. I thought it was interesting that um, Marion, Lindsay, Tommy, and Lonnie, who I'll get into in a minute, um, all were hanging out that night. They were drinking at a bar, getting drunk to uh, 40 years of you know trauma the, of dealing with the shape 40 years ago, uh, which was kind of cool. I don't know how believable it is, um, but I, I, th I thought it was kind of cool. Um, you know, Tommy got on stage because it was some type of talent night and was telling everyone in the bar the story of you know 78 essentially, and I was mixed on that because it's like. Are you telling them, or are you trying to tell the audience who hasn't seen that? So that's not, that, that felt a little forced to me. Um, but uh, getting back to Marion, you know, I, I thought she was good. Um, she mentioned Loomis once. I was hoping for a lot more exposi exposition from her about, you know, any time she might have spent with Loomis, anything Loomis might have said about the shape. I was hoping for a lot more of that. Didn't get it. But overall, Marion was fine. Um, Lonnie, Lonnie Lamb. Lonnie was actually my favorite returning character. I'm shocked by that. I thought uh, the actor that played him, I can't remember his name, did a good job. I believed that it was Lonnie Lamb. Um, you know, he mentions early on, he actually introduces Tommy on stage when Tommy gives that speech, and he mentions early on that, um, you know, I used to give him a hard time, but now we're buds or some, some shit like that. Um, and then he's really integral to the plot. He is the one that figures out that they're going to, um, or that Michael's, the bodies are leading to Michael's childhood home. Um, and I, th I thought he was really good. I thought he was likable. The one thing I don't like is, you know, we get to the end of the movie and, you know, Lonnie, Cameron, and Allison show up at the Myers house. And, you know, Lonnie has Cameron and Allison, you know, stay inside, okay? Or stay inside the car while he goes to check things out. You know, horror movie trope 101, right? Um, and Lonnie goes in and gets killed, and it's an off-screen kill. You know, he ends up brutally fucking, like, killed, it looked like, hanging up in the attic or something. My, the believability, just the dumb decision of going in there by yourself really took me out of that. 
And what I mean by that is, yes, I would not bring my son and his, I guess, girlfriend in there to hunt Myers. Obviously not, okay? He even mentions, like, taking your son right to the lion's den. What are you thinking? Um, but it is 2018, right? We do have cell phones now. You figured out all the bodies were going to the Myers house. So why wouldn't you text someone? You know, there's a mob of people looking for Myers. You know, text some of them and say, hey, get get over here. Um, you know, so I, that really took me out of it. But overall, I liked Lonnie. And finally, for the returning character, Sheriff Brackett, um, he's in the mixed aspect overall because um, two things. Number one, he he's so old. It took me out of it not being able to, uh, you know, see that he's, I mean, it's the same actor. I know that it's Char Charles Cyphers, but he just looked so old. And I get it. He's, you know, Mr. Riddle's age. He's probably 87, right? Uh, but it took me out of it a little bit. But overall, it was nice to see Brackett. You know, I liked he had a conversation with the sheriff, um, with Sheriff Barker. Um, I liked that he was involved in a lot of the hospital stuff. He had a little more screen time than I thought he would get. Um, and then another thing I didn't like was he has a line at the end of the movie. He confronts Michael's, Michael. And he says his line that he said to Lori in the OG. He says, uh, it's Halloween, Michael. Everyone's entitled to one good scare. He's fucking punning him. I know, like, he, the guy killed his daughter, so he's probably just waiting to, like, you know, talk shit to him. It just felt forced. Would he really fucking say that? Would that character really say that? Or is that said for all the Halloween fans? Yes, I, I get it's an iconic line in the franchise. I totally get that. But I didn't like, I didn't like that he said that to Myers. Um, so yeah, those are the returning characters. As you can see, I'm all over the spectrum on them. So that's why I put them in the mixed category. Um, another thing in the mixed category... Believe it or not, is Michael's escape from the burning Strode residence. Um, look, this was everything we thought it was going to be. It was brutal. It was badass. It was a visual spectacle. And it was awesome to see. Okay? Essentially, we saw the whole fucking thing in the trailer. Um, so that I'm mixed on that. You know, don't show the whole scene in the trailer. Show a little bit of it. And I know it's not the movie's fault. I'm um, just like... 2018 showing Vicky Michael in the closet when Vicky opens the door is not 2018's fault but I'm going to hold it against it for a little bit for showing the whole thing in the trailer alright the ending let's talk about the ending so this movie ends essentially with Michael getting his ass beat by the mob which we're going to talk about then um, he gets his ass beat you know Karen then goes to uh, comfort Allison on the steps of the Myers residence where Allison was left because she kind of, you know, had a run in with the shape and then, you know, Karen got Michael to chase after her, right? And then we see, we have like a voiceover from Lori talking about, you know, some of the lines we heard from the trailer. So we have a voiceover from Lori about that. And then Karen goes and stands on the street. And then we see the image we saw in the second trailer of, Car or Karen sees the image we saw in the second trailer of, uh, she looks up in Judith's, Judith's room and sees, you know, six-year-old Mickey Myers in his clown costume, which was a cool image. Why she saw that? Why would she see that? What is that? Why would she see that? Is that is he supernatural? I, I get it. That's the same question you want to ask about the first one, but it's just weird that she'd see, you know, 70 or 63 Myers standing there. And then Lori's continuing to talk about, you know, the evil, and so is Hawkins. Um, but then... Karen is standing in the uh, Judas bedroom, staring out the window, and Myers shows up behind and kills her, and the movie ends. It's mixed for me. I like that the movie ended with Myers essentially winning. Okay, I've always wanted that. I've said I've always wanted wanted that. It just felt a little abrupt. You know, like I don't I don't know how necessary it was to have this happening while Lori's giving the voiceover. Um, it just seemed a little made-for-TV-ish for me. We'll see the repercussions of that, obviously, in Halloween Ends, which now we know takes place years later. Um, but it was just mixed. Um, I get what they were going for, but it didn't 100% work for me. All right. Hannibal Memorial is my next on Mixed. Love to fucking see it. 
we actually spent a lot more time there. You know, as you guys know, Halloween 2, 1981 is my favorite sequel. So any time we spend in Haddonfield Memorial is awesome for me. Uh, the reason it's mixed is there is a scene involving the mob of people, which I did not like. And actually, I'm going to talk about that in the dislike section. Um, but because it was so specific to Haddonfield Memorial, I'm demoting Haddonfield Memorial just a little bit and, call, and calling it mixed. But I love Haddonfield Memorial. Now, uh, final thing in the mixed category, and that is going to be the score. So, first of all, I like I said, I loved the entire score in 1978. Uh, when we were in the flashback, they knocked that shit out of the park. Um, everything about the score just screamed OG Halloween, which is fucking awesome, and I didn't expect it, to be honest. Um, so shame on me for not realizing that they were going to you know, knock that score in 78 out of the park. There is another track that plays when Michael is putting his mask back on after Karen you know, takes it off of him. Okay? Thought it was awesome. It brought me back to the Shea Punts Allison. I think it kind of was the Shea Punts Allison with a little tweak to it, to be honest with you. But I loved that. Absolutely loved it. Everything else, not a big fan. Um, uh, there's one scene in particular, one track in particular, where um, Michael is walking down the stairs after Allison in the Myers house, after he just killed um, Cameron, or he's I guess he's going to finish killing Cameron because it was fucking brutal. But he's walking down, and the, uh, the version of the Halloween theme starts playing, and it's, something's off on it a little bit. I didn't like it at all. I thought it was fucking bad, guys. And it's probably just me. Uh, maybe, but I, I didn't like it. I thought the, tw the score in 2018 was a lot better than the score in Halloween Kills, um, which is a little disappointing for me. Um, but, like I said, they nailed the 78 stuff and that track at the end made it mixed for me and not bad. Alright, a few dislikes here, guys. My main dislike is the Haddonfield mob. Now, I understand what they were going for. How Michael has affected the town of Haddonfield. It did not work for me one bit. Tommy kind of led the charge, you know, started just saying evil dies tonight, um, which was pretty forced, by the way, you know, line, forced line of dialogue. Um, you know, it's like he's reading a goddamn script or something, um, something like that. He was, he's reading, it's like he's sitting there reading lines or something the way he said it. Um, but anyway, so he gets everyone to go after Myers, right? And as I mentioned with the Haddonfield Memorial, there is a scene where um, one of the other inmates from the bus crash kind of sneaks his way into the hospital and they see, they see a glimpse of him or something. And they all think it is Myers. And they're all chasing this guy up the stairs. And Karen actually runs up to help the guy. And it's just a fucking angry mob of people. Nobody can stop them. They're like fucking, uh, it's like a riot. Um, and then, um, you know, they scare this guy so much. And the movie tries to make us, you know, feel some empathy for the guy um, and then the guy jumps and commits suicide um, and then the people are like oh man like look look at what, look what we've become I mean, look what he's done to us um, so it did not work for me that scene at all um, I actually hated it to be honest with you um, you know and, and I just found it extremely unnecessary even though I know what they were going for you know, how Michael, how the events of 78 and how the events of 18 have affected not just Lori, but the trauma of the town. I get all that. I get all that. I respect what they were going for. Not executed well, in my opinion. Um, so that took me out of it. And then the scene at the end with the mob, um, basically Karen, you know, has Myers chase her after she takes off the mask. And it's a trick. Um, she yells, gotcha, or doesn't yell, but she says, gotcha again. And you got the town, all the mob people standing around him. That's when Brackett gives his line. Um, everyone's entitled to one good scare, which as I mentioned, I didn't like. And then Myers is just kind of standing around. And he puts on the mask and then they play that good music, like I said. And then he kind of looks around, looks around, and then they beat the piss out of him. They shoot him. They they hit him while he's down. They, they stab him. Karen comes down and picks up the knife and stabs him. Um, it didn't work for me, you know. Um, once again, I get what they were going for. 
you know, the town of Haddonfield fighting back. It's a cool concept, but it didn't work for me. And maybe it was Anthony Michael Hall's performance, maybe it was Brackett's line, um, but it didn't work for me. Um, so I, I didn't like it at all. Uh, so that's my number one dislike of this movie. Uh, a couple more dislikes. Number one, there was just way too much going on, and I knew this would fucking happen. Um, you know, it's on the same night, you're introducing all these OG characters, and then you have to introduce all these other characters um, that were in 2018 and bring them together. You got no time to flesh out these characters. Um, obviously, you know, the OG characters all knew each other still. Um, how believable is that? I don't know. Maybe it is. Small town, right? Um, so it happens. So that doesn't completely bother me. Um, I would have liked to see more of like a reunion aspect, you know, um, especially between Lori and Tommy. That's what I wanted. Um, or, you know, Lori and Brackett. You know, we didn't really get that, mainly because it was too rushed. Um, so, yeah, that, 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 that's a definite negative for me that I disliked. And finally, uh, in my dislike column, I thought the tension in this movie was lacking, minus, uh, that, minus that scene with Lindsay, and minus a couple scenes where Myers is in the houses, and you know, the people are walking around seeing if someone's in their houses. There was a little bit of tension, but not much. Um, essentially, this movie was um, flashback, Myers killing people, cut to the hospital, Myers killing more people, cut back to the hospital, cut back to Myers killing more people, Michael finds the Myers house, cut back to Michael kill, or cut back to the hospital, and so on, and so on, and so on. Um, so the tension and, you know, so much going on, you know, it was just lacking. But overall, guys, let's talk about overall. Overall, I really enjoyed this theater experience and I really enjoyed Halloween Kills as a whole. Was it perfect? Absolutely not. Is any movie in this franchise perfect? No, the OG's close. Halloween 2 is very good, but they're not perfect, guys. Um, we all have our own qualms with every movie in this franchise. Where am I gonna rank this movie? I'm gonna make another video on that, um, but I'll tell you right now, it's gonna be in the upper half. I think it was well made. I think they knocked the flashback out of the park. Um, I think, you know, having these OG characters return, even though I was mixed on it, was cool. I thought um, Myers was maybe the best Myers we've ever seen since uh, Nick Castle. Um, all of that. I, I, I just really fucking enjoyed this movie. Um, it met and probably exceeded just a little bit my expectations. I cannot complain. Bravo, David Gordon Green. Bravo, Danny McBride. You guys fucking did it. You made a badass, kick-ass Halloween sequel. Um, I really hope the next one can conclude this new trilogy nicely. Uh, but overall, guys, very happy with it. I'll get into grades and all that when I am uh, doing my ranking videos. Really appreciate you guys watching, and let me know your thoughts.